For NATO, air superiority has always been a pillar of security. Control the sky, and you control the battlefield. But Russia's steady progression from the S-500 to the S-700 is forcing NATO planners to reconsider that assumption. What once looked like a regional air defense system is now evolving into a long-range, AI-driven missile shield with the potential to reshape how NATO aircraft operate across Europe and beyond. The S-700 is not just about defending Russian airspace. It is about extending influence, denying access, and changing the strategic balance. In this video, we examine how the S-500 laid the groundwork, how the S-700 takes it further, and what this new generation of missile technology could mean for NATO's future operations. The S-500 was already a serious concern for NATO defense planners. It introduced the ability to engage high-speed targets, track stealth aircraft more effectively, and intercept threats at extreme altitudes. NATO Air Forces had to account for its presence when planning reconnaissance missions, bomber routes, and missile strike options. The S-500 did not eliminate NATO's air advantage, but it complicated it. Every flight path near Russian-controlled regions required more planning, more electronic warfare support, and greater risk assessment. But Russia did not treat the S-500 as a final product. It treated it as a foundation. Data gathered from testing, simulations, and operational exercises revealed where the system could be improved. Detection speed, target prioritization, missile coordination, and system endurance all became focus areas. The result of this long refinement process is the S-700, a system designed not just to react, but to shape the air battle before it begins. The modification from S-500 to S-700 centers on intelligence and integration. The S-700 is built around a digital core that fuses radar data, infrared sensing, passive detection, and external inputs into a single operational picture. Instead of separate systems working independently, the S-700 functions as one coordinated network. Its AI continuously evaluates threats, predicts flight paths, and assigns interceptors automatically. For NATO pilots and planners, this means less time to react and fewer safe corridors in contested airspace. The way the S-700 is manufactured also reflects a shift in Russian military priorities. Production relies heavily on robotic assembly, automated quality control, and advanced composite materials. Radar arrays, missile casings, and launcher components are produced with extreme precision, reducing inconsistencies between units. Compared to the S-500, the S-700 benefits from faster production cycles and improved durability. For NATO, this raises a key concern, the possibility that Russia could deploy these systems more widely and more quickly than expected. Range is one of the most strategically important features of the S-700. While the S-500 already extended Russia's defensive reach, the S-700 is believed to push engagement distances even further. This expanded range allows Russia to monitor and potentially target aircraft operating deep within areas NATO once considered relatively safe. Surveillance planes, refueling aircraft, and command platforms could be forced to operate farther from the front lines, reducing NATO's operational efficiency and flexibility. Power and missile performance also see a noticeable leap. The S-700 is thought to use new propulsion systems that provide faster acceleration and greater maneuverability at high altitude. These missiles are designed to intercept not only traditional aircraft but also fast-moving cruise missiles and emerging hypersonic threats. For NATO, this challenges the assumption that speed alone can overcome modern air defenses. The S-700 is built to close. That gap. A major difference between earlier systems and the S-700 is the role of robotics. Autonomous support vehicles handle missile transport, reload operations, and maintenance tasks. Robotic systems monitor the perimeter, assist in system diagnostics, and help keep the network operational under combat conditions. This reduces reliance on large human crews and allows the system to remain active for extended periods. From NATO's perspective, this makes the S-700 harder to disrupt through conventional strikes or sabotage. The broader implication for NATO is not just technical, but strategic. The S-700 strengthens Russia's ability to create anti-access zones, areas where NATO aircraft face increased risk simply by entering. This affects air patrols, rapid response missions, and reinforcement plans. 
It may force NATO to rely more heavily on standoff weapons, cyber operations, and space-based assets, increasing costs and complexity. Globally, the presence of the S-700 also influences NATO's partnerships. Countries near Russia may feel more pressure to adjust their defense strategies or invest in countermeasures. Others may reconsider their reliance on air power alone. The S-700 sends a clear message that Russia intends to challenge NATO not by matching aircraft numbers, but by limiting where and how those aircraft can operate. In the bigger picture, the move from S-500 to S-700 signals a shift in modern warfare. Defense systems are no longer passive shields. They are active tools that shape strategy, influence alliances, and redefine risk. For NATO, Russia's new missile technology represents a challenge that cannot be ignored. It demands adaptation, innovation, and a new way of thinking about air power in an era where the sky is no longer uncontested. Share your thoughts below and don't forget to like, subscribe, and join us next time as we explore more of the world's most advanced military technology.